For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The word of the, the word of God, the gospel. Salvation is only wrought through Jesus Christ. There is no room for religion. There's no room for what you think. It has been written in the King James Bible. It has been settled a long time ago that from the Bethlehem manger to Calvary's cross that Jesus is God and God is Jesus and salvation to get to God by the word of Jesus himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So in the words of Jesus, there is nothing else. There is no one else. There is no hope of going to heaven without Jesus Christ. The Bible says, preach the gospel. The gospel is that Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And was buried. And arose again the third day according to the scriptures. No religion is according to the scriptures. Many religion has the traditions of men. They have twisted the scriptures. But the fact is that Jesus saves. And you can toot the horn all you want. I'll just go louder. But Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. And the pure fact is that you can get to heaven. You can have access to God, but you've got to come through the straight gate that's Jesus. You have to come as a sinner that you are. Sinners cannot approach God, for God says, Be holy, for I am holy. And the scriptures proclaim that all have sinned. So, if God says, Be holy, and the Bible says we are not holy. And then we got a problem. Because you cannot access God by the scriptures. When God has set a standard to be holy. And we are not holy. We are everything but. So there is no access to you in your sins. There's no access for sinners on your own merit. There is nothing you can do to save your soul. Not of works, least any man boast. And God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. So the opening verse that we have every week is the invitation of God to you through Jesus Christ. That your access is only by Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, nothing but Jesus Christ. Our acceptance into God forever is the one, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. Now, if God requires holiness, and we are sinners, we can't access God being sinners because we are not holy. And yet, we have, according to the scriptures, they stop. We have access according to the scriptures, the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. So in our sinning, 
in our state of being sinners. We cannot get to God. And yet we can get to God through Jesus Christ who said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That's not said by Mary. That's not said by any other God, small g. That is said by God himself, Jesus Christ. Allah. Now be careful. Because some people believe in Jesus, who is not God, and they are found in a religion that will not save their souls, because Paul has spoken, there is another Jesus. And you've got to have the biblical Jesus to be saved. You've got to come to Jesus Christ as a sinner that you are. And you've got to walk away. Placing your sins upon Jesus Christ. Being washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says you've got to be a new creature. You've got to have a new love of God. You've got to have a new attitude to the scriptures. You have to have the works of God through you by Jesus Christ in Jesus Christ alone. But the very first point is to realize that you're on a road that you think you're going to be okay and you're not. And that's why we preach. There are tons and tons of people who are living today who will die. The wages of sin is death. And in the back of their brain, oh, I'm okay because whatever. Fill in the blank. And I'm here to tell you that if it's not the belief in the Lamb of God, if it's not faith in Jesus Christ, you're not okay. You are not okay without the unbelief of Jesus. You must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. There is no salvation in any other but Jesus Christ. And without Jesus Christ, I've got to say it, you will go to hell. And you will burn in hell. And your access to God is only by the one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is Jesus Christ. There's only one man above all men. Jesus Christ. Your eternal, to, your eternal hope. And your want to rest in peace. Lies on your faith and your belief on the shed blood, the finished work of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that alone. If you have not ever put your faith and hope in the gospel that Jesus suffered and died according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures if you have put that no faith in Jesus Christ and they were to put an RIP on your tombstone that would be a lie because without Jesus Christ, without the saving faith of Jesus Christ, without the love of God through Calvary, the tomb, and the resurrection, you will be in torments forever. And that's not resting in peace. That moment you take your eyes off the, the earthly and open your eyes to the eternal, by Jesus Christ you will get to heaven. By anything else, you'll end up in hell. God has standard one way, one person, to get to him. And God has never established religion. Religion is man-made of the source of the roots of Satan. Jesus Christ is God-approved. Jesus Christ is scripture. Jesus Christ fulfilled the scripture. Jesus Christ the prophet and the savior and the teacher of the father who is also the father. Without Jesus Christ and you die 
you will go to hell. Let's get that down and simple. Being a Baptist, being of a church, being baptized is not going to save your soul. It'll damn your soul. Television, radio, preachers cannot save your soul. There's nothing else but the blood of Jesus Christ that will save your soul. No other way but that way of Jesus. All right, the music again. It's plain and simple. It's week after week after week, the same thing. It is that Jesus Christ is able to save your soul to get to heaven. It is a fact of the Bible that anything else but Jesus Christ will get you into hell. You don't need to do anything to go to hell. Keep on going the way you're going. Keep on living without Jesus Christ. Keep on going without Jesus Christ. Keep on with your religion. Attend the church of your choice. Get baptized in salt or fresh water. And without Jesus Christ, you will end up in hell. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And shall be known of God. And get your reservations in the Lamb's Book of Life forever. The only way to get that reservation is by the blood of Jesus Christ. The Holy Jesus. The only Jesus. Doing it again. But the Bible says, <clears throat> oh, excuse my voice, and what is lacking is the fact is, and here in Daytona Beach, Florida, there is no fear of God. No fear at all. You know he never existed, right? Oh, I know he exists. He exists in my heart. Only unbelievers would make a foolish statement like that. Then read the Bible, sir. Older. Oh. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. An old book I just read from Job. It's amazing how God works. The fear of the Lord will bring you wisdom. The fear of the Lord will bring you through Jesus Christ that you will do what God has said to do and not religion. And not what you've been taught by your family traditions, but by what God has said. If there was a fear of God in Daytona Beach, you'd be coming out saying, what must I do? How do I do? How do I get right with God in four years? That has not happened. And in four years, we're going to hire Satan to try to get rid of the gospel, and you won't do it. Because the word of God, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. There is no fear of God when you try to shut up the preacher. Psalms 19.9 The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. You want to be clean? You want to be removed of filth? That can only be by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You cannot be clean but by the word of God and the word of God is Jesus Christ. You know what? If you would have been grown, you would have grown up in Pakistan, You'd be Muslim. That's no, he wouldn't. Be. Yeah, he would be. You'd be Muslim because that would be the, the, the society. Oh, you mean the killer be. religion? You would have the been. The killer religion. See, they Muslim. shed blood, but you're Jesus just, Christ you're, shed blood you're that you may be saved. the other side of the coin. 
That's what you are. Jesus Christ shed his blood that you might be saved. Hey, you can get your, your American car and drive off. Bye. The fear of the Lord is clean. There is no cleanness without the fear of God. This guy has no fear of God. He's not clean. He's angry without God. That's what religion does to you. Religion makes you angry. But Jesus Christ gives you peace. That's a fruit of the Spirit. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will give you love. That's, that's not found in religion. They'll come up to you mean and grumpy. Oh, I don't want to do this. Don't you shut up. Judge not. That's religion. And Jesus Christ said, through his Christians, through those that are saved, come. And we're inviting you to God in peace and love and joy. Come. Come forward. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and have a wonderful life in the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not saying that your life by being saved, it will be wonderful. It will probably be worse. But the peace and the joy that God will give you through trials and tribulations. And yet what is to come further in the eternal life will be peace. And without Jesus Christ, it will be torment. I will never say that being saved will make your earthly life wonderful and great. I will never say that because that's false teaching. I will never say give money and God will give it back because that's false teaching. Psalms 34, 11. Come, ye children, hearken unto me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord needs to be taught. I am able to teach you the fear of the Lord. Through the Bible. Through the Word of God. It's a course that is free. It is a course that has been paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that learning of the fear of God is to believe on God, Jesus Christ. Through the word of God, through the study of the word of God, through the reading of the word of God. You can get the fear of God. That's why the, the Bibles are removed from the schools. That's why the Bibles are removed from the courtroom. That's why the Bibles are being removed from the prisons. We don't want you to read the Bible. We do not want you to fear God. We do not want you to be instructed by God. We want you to know our evil ways. We want you to go about the same path, the same highway we're going to. And I think the quote, the world is the highway to hell. And that's through the absence. That's through the rejection. That's through not having Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's the highway to hell. The highway to hell is religion and education and atheism and Americanism. will get you to hell. But Jesus Christ is able to save your soul. Jesus Christ is able to put your name down in the Lamb's book of life that you may have eternal life. Yeah. Nothing else can do that. Yeah. Psalms 111 verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they do his commandments. His praise endureth forever. When you look at the fear of the Lord in the Bible, it brings wisdom. It brings understanding. It brings you to know what God has to say. It brings you to know that what Jesus Christ has to say. And if you truly fear God, you would step out and you would want the wisdom of what God wants you to do. And four years, here, four years here, and not one person has come out and stepped out to find out what must I do to be saved. There's no fear. There is no one who has been on this dark side. There is no one who has been in religion. Has come out and said, I want to get out of that. I want the way of truth. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. 
when a man comes to the end of his life and he dies in his sins. He dies without Jesus Christ. The Bible says he's a fool. It is to be foolish to cast your last breath without Jesus Christ. The Bible says it is foolish, absolutely foolish, not to put your fear in the Lord. Many foolish people. Proverbs 1.29 For they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Many of you do not care you do not know, you do not want to have anything to do with God. So, you will not fear God. I understand that. That's one of your options in life. God's not going to force you to be saved. But I will tell you, not having that of God doesn't get rid of God. Because you don't want God, you don't want to believe in God, you're not going to erase God from my life, from my family's life, and those people who do want to do right, to those who are, are saved and love the Lord, you're not going to erase God because you don't want to have anything to do with Him, you don't want to fear Him. But to those that do fear the Lord, these verses are alive and well in our lives. And we're trying to get you to come forth. Put away your religion. Put away your brain. And with the heart, put your faith in Jesus Christ. Come out with the fear of the Lord and wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And you will get to know more of God as the years go on. When you study your Bible. That's only found in one Bible, the study. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way. And the forward mouth do I hate. If you got the fear of the Lord, you would not like, you would not approve of anything against the Lord and the Word. There are many people that come to us and say, thank you for preaching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your, the willpower that you have to overcome the obstacles that this farmer's market has given you. But we enjoy the word. We enjoy you being here. You are a testimony to us. Those are people that fear the Lord. Ah, right, get out of here. Why don't you shut up? The Muslims are good. Those are people who don't fear the Lord. And those are people when they die, they'll end up in a place called hell because they don't fear God. The fear of the Lord will bring you to Jesus Christ to be saved. The fear of the Lord is that there is a hell, and if I don't do what God tells me to do, I fear God casting me off into hell. Now, there's no fear, oh, God loves everybody. God's going to let everybody into heaven. That's no fear. And if that's coming out of the church pulpits and is that God will send everybody to heaven, that preacher, that preacher has no fear of God. I read to you, out of Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. And that's in the churches in the world today. Look how many people we say. Look at our vacation Bible. Look how great we are. We're built upon the foundation. We were the first church in this area. We've got the world's greatest preacher. Look how great we are. What about Jesus? There's some nut downtown in Florida, and he preaches Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Because there's the fear of the Lord. There's no greater hope for Paul and Silas 
to be locked up because of the word of God, that at midnight they're praying and singing praises to God. And that their hope in Jesus Christ brought the Philippian jailer forth. And he says, as this sign says over here, what must I do to be saved? The answer of the men that follow God, Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You know what that Philippian jailer had that you don't? He had to fear the Lord. He had to fear the Lord. You know what Paul had on the road to Damascus that you don't have? That he got right with God? He feared the Lord. You know what Cornelius had? The Bible says Cornelius, he was a wonderful man. He did this. He prayed. Blah, 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 blah. And he even had an angel visit him. You know how Cornelius got saved? He feared the Lord. It's that simple. You're not going to get right with God if you do not fear the Lord. You are not right with God if you don't fear the Lord. Even as a born-again, Bible-believing Christian with my name in the Lamb's book of life by the blood of Jesus Christ, I still feel God. For me, at saved, I can't go to hell. But I can have a God that's displeased with me. I can have a God that will say, not well done. I can have a God who will take away my crowns if I have any. I will be rewardless if I have any reward, rewards if I don't fear God. I stand here preaching the word of God. I stand here preaching Jesus because the Bible says, Go in all the world and preach the gospel. I enjoy preaching. I love preaching. I love the aspect to be able to get out and preach. But the fear of the Lord says... Those people are going to hell. Those people need to grow. Those people need to know more about me. You get out there with that loud mouth I've given you and preach Jesus. You say, will God kill me if I don't do it? I don't think so. But I don't know what rewards and crowns I can get from this ministry. I hate to lose them from the holy righteous God. I want to hear today. When I get to glory, I want to hear what the Bible says. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I'm not ever going to hear that if I don't fear the Lord even being saved. Churches, good Bible-believing churches are falling off on the wayside. Why? Because they began to not fear the Lord. I hold one page a bold lettering of scripture, of the fear of the Lord and where it's placed. And most of it is in the book of Proverbs by the most wisest man ever to live on this planet, the wisdom of God. And he writes more about the fear of the Lord. And he lost that fear of the Lord. And he stepped away from the fear of the Lord. And he went as a sinner. And God gave hostility to his kingdom. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Now look at this verse for a minute in two contexts. The fear of the Lord prolongeth days, but the years of the wicked. The Bible says if you do not fear the Lord, you are wicked. And the Bible says there is no peace. Save the Lord unto the wicked. So either you fear the Lord, or you're wicked. That's part one of that verse. Now, prolongeth days. By the blood and the testimony of Jesus Christ, I am saved. I'm going to New Jerusalem. I'm going to a place where there will be no more clocks, calendars, or time. Infinity. Eternity. World without end. To be ever with the one that suffered and died for me. That's life eternal. At any moment I could die, the Bible says to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Forever. That's wonderful. 
I could be right here and right now, and the, and the rapture could happen. All the church that are saved meets in the clouds. And then we go meet Jesus, which is wonderful and great. Forever. But with you that die in your sins and go to hell or the lake of fire that follows afterward, the Bible counts that as no life at all. According to John the Baptist, he that has the Son has everlasting life. The Son equals everlasting life. But he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. No Jesus, no life. No Jesus, the wrath of God. And if you don't fear God, you don't have Jesus. You got a religion. Because the fear of the Lord, I just read to you. Those that are right with God. If you don't have the fear with the Lord, well, I just read to you, evil. I'll read it again. He that feareth the Lord, side A, prolonging his day, but the years of the wicked, side B. You either fear the Lord or you're wicked. Plain and simple. And the wicked will not stand in the presence of God. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, ye that work in iniquity. I never knew you. That's what Jesus Christ, the loving God, will tell you. That's the God that all love and all care. Depart from me that work in iniquity. I never knew you. The wicked. The fear of the Lord's a fountain of life. Now if that's not Jesus Christ, I don't know what is. And if you don't have the fear of the Lord, you do not have a fountain of life. You've got the wrath of God, John 3.36. The wrath of God are upon those who reject God. The wrath of God is upon those who choose religion. The wrath of God upon those that will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And which falls with the scripture. Because you don't fear the Lord. It's the scripture. I can open up my Bible and show you the same places. That this paper holds, but it's easier to hold the piece of paper than trying to flip through the pages and, and the breezes. But this is out of the King James Bible. The fear of the Lord. Ask yourself today, do I have that fear of the Lord that that man is preaching? Or do I fear something else? And if I don't fear the Lord... That preacher says with the Bible, I am wicked. And if God says, be holy for I am holy. Where are you going to stand at judgment day? You're going to stand lost and, un and condemned and depart from me that work in iniquity. Many, many people throughout the world think they're right with God and God's going to call it iniquity in the last days. At that great white throne judgment, it will be described, it will be written down, it will be recorded as, God, I have religion. Depart from you that work in iniquity. Depart from me, I never knew you. God, I got degrees and diploma. Depart from me that, ye that work in iniquity, I never knew you. God, I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Big difference. Well done goes to those that feared God. Depart from me that work in iniquity. Goes to those that did not fear God. And I see many before my eyes that do not have the fear of the Lord. And you are without excuse today by hearing the preaching. Because you have heard Jesus says. You have been told that your religion 
will not give you hope. For the Bible calls Jesus the blessed hope. Religion, God has called Satan the father of lies. For the fact is that only Jesus saves. 